Hello friends and welcome to another video. Today I will be painting some alpacas. This may seem like a little bit of a random subject to choose, but I will explain later in the video. For this particular painting, I start off by blocking out the background colours and then work on blocking out the main colours that I see in the two alpacas. So for the main colours of alpaca, I was using Naples Yellow, Burnt Sienna and Yellow Ochre. I then begin to work on the dark areas of the alpacas, such as their muzzles and the eyes, using a mixture of black and white. I always tend to paint the eyes in detail as quick as I can, so that it gives that lifelike feel quite early on in the painting. Once I was happy with it, I then began to paint some more detailed coloured fur around the eye of the alpaca. Again using a mixture of burnt sienna, raw sienna and yellow ochre, as well as Naples yellow. For this painting I used the grid method to draw out the alpacas. This is where I've divided the page into squares, which I've then drawn the alpaca where it matches those squares. So for this particular painting I'm focused on each little square as I paint. This is mainly because I'm trying to figure out what colours work with the alpaca's fur. So I'm using each square as almost like a little experiment slash test area. So that when I go to paint the rest of the fur, I feel comfortable knowing how to blend to achieve realistic fur. I then continue working in detail on the painting square by square as I've learned how to achieve those colours. So why exactly did I decide to draw an alpaca today? I thought it would be really interesting to mix things up a little bit and to challenge myself to not only draw pets such as dogs, but to experiment with painting other animals. I thought a really interesting way to paint some more animals would be to paint an animal for each letter of the alphabet. There was quite a few interesting ones that I could have done for A, but I thought it'd be really interesting to paint an alpaca as they have these cute little furry faces. And I just found this photo reference quite intriguing. So this is A for alpaca and be sure to let me know down in the comments what you think I should paint for the letter B. So the painting is finally coming together as I'm working away from the face. I am just suggesting the presence of fur by putting some broad brush strokes of this Naples yellow and yellow ochre. As I have a painterly style, I enjoy putting broader brush strokes towards the outer edges of my painting, in contrast to the face, which is a lot more detailed. I was debating whether to put this second alpaca in the painting, but I read online recently that alpacas actually don't like being alone, so I thought it wasn't right to exclude his friend in this painting. <laughs> it was also interesting because this alpaca had a much richer browner tone so it would be a nice contrast from the alpaca that was at the front of the painting. Next up I had to think about the background. The background in the photo reference was very blurred out and it appeared to be a mixture of trees and buildings. This was also something that I thought would be a fun challenge as I don't normally paint backgrounds in my paintings and sometimes in art it's just good to push yourself out of your comfort zone to see what you can do. I then switched it up and started working on some finer details on the main alpaca. In particular, I started working on the longer furs that can be seen from the ear. This just helps to give it that really fluffy texture as it contrasts with the background. I also started to work on the muzzle in a bit more detail to give it a little more finer fur detail with little dots. As I was looking at the background, I realised that it was a little bit too in focus in comparison to the photo, so I just used some white to fade this out. This is typically something you observe in photography, where the main focus of the image is in high detail with bright colours, versus the background image was a little bit more blurry and a little bit more faded. 
Alpacas are quite often confused for llamas, but alpacas are actually noticeably a lot smaller in size and have much shorter ears. They also tend to be bred for their fur. Apparently their fur is quite similar to sheep's wool, but it's a lot finer and silkier, hence why farmers are quite keen on alpacas. As I was painting, I was beginning to have thoughts that the bottom area of the painting was just a little bit too vibrant compared to the photo reference, so I mixed a really really light diluted brown with water to cover this area and give it a wash. I then used a tissue to lift up any of the paint where I thought it had removed too much. Next up, I painted the clouds in the sky and that was the finishing touch to this piece. I've actually already painted Chameleon for C, so be sure to check it out in this video. 